The Douglas Coleman Show is made possible with support from Seth David Radwell, a recent guest on the program and author of American Schism, How the Two Enlightenments Hold the Secret to Healing Our Nation, released this past July. As Publishers Weekly writes in its recent glowing book life review of American Schism, business executive Radwell's epic debut examines the historical influences that have led to what he sees as the collapse of politics in the United States. Seth Radwell makes the case that the current chasm between the American right and left can be traced back to the 18th century's Age of Enlightenment and the basic tenets of liberty, equality, and reason. American Schism provides a historical perspective that can help us fight today's unreason with reason and bridge current-day divides. American Schism by Seth David Radwell is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and wherever books are sold. For more information, go to americanschismbook.com It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Hi, it's Olivia Rocks, and you're listening to The Douglas Coleman Show. This is It's Christmas Time, my new tune all about the magic of Christmas. I hope you enjoy it. It's Christmas time Have the time of your life It's time to celebrate You know you just can't I want to see the snow falling down And the love all around I want to see your heart wrapped up in joy I remember those sleepless nights With dream-filled eyes And peppermint skies above I remember sitting at your bed Waiting long instead Couldn't wait to tell you I'd hurt Sleepless nights with dream filled eyes and peppermint skies above. I remember sitting out shopping, waiting long instead. Couldn't wait to tell you.
Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Olivia Rocks. Hey, Olivia, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Doing fine, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I've been thank you so much for having me on. Excited to talk to you uh, ever since I got your email from your people, and uh, as we were just talking about before we got on, I just watched your princess video, and I really liked it. I like the kind of Disney Snow White sort of thing at the beginning with the Once Upon a Time book. Uh, that was very cool. And then we were just talking about the horses. Now, do you ride well, or was that kind of nerve-wracking for you to do the horse? So, actually, I grew up in Boulder, Colorado, so all of my friends had horses. I never had horses myself, but um, I'm pretty pretty darn good at riding. Um, but it was a completely different thing to learn how to canter in a long dress and cape, because it's called Princess, the song, so the whole thing is set back in time in this faraway land, Um, and just to have to learn how to canter while, you know, the cape is basically (laughs) bouncing on the horse's uh, back is completely different for the horse and the rider, Um, so I worked with a trainer for that, and that was so cool to get to see that come to life. and, of course, we had the, you know, pristine white horse that I was cantering on. Oh, yeah, that big beautiful. Horse. Yeah, it looked beautiful. <laughs> now, I didn't happen to notice in the video, but were you riding a stride or were you riding side saddle? No, I was not riding side saddle. I, I was just riding normally. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, yeah. Well, I didn't know because back then in those days, the women typically rode side saddle with those long dresses on. And I'll tell you, I mean, I've ridden horses before. And the idea of riding in that position would completely throw my balance. There would be no way I could balance on that horse if I had both legs off on one side. Just not a chance. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Well, anyways, well done with the video. And you said that the song is on the charts. Now, where is it? What place? It's uh, number 28 on the charts. It literally just came out uh, a few weeks ago, too, which is crazy. It's, it was one of the number one most added with uh, Ed Sheeran and Dua Lipa and Elton John, their new song. and oh, wow. it, It's just amazing. So I'm so grateful, and I love that people love the song. It's magical for me, and the song itself is magical. So it's a great combination. <laughs> well, like I said, it's a great song, and it's a great video, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you. I want to get your backstory a little bit. Singer, songwriter, sure. recording artist. So you write all your own material? I do, yep. Oh, that's yep. fabulous. And you were also on American Idol. I think you're like the second or third person I've had on the show who was on that show. Uh, oh, season cool. 15. Now, I don't keep up with the show, unfortunately. How long ago was that? When when was that that you were on? That was about uh, five six years ago, give or take. Um, but it was great because I really, I reached out to such an amazing fan base and I really did connect with the fans. Um, and I think it sort of gave me a good foundation on which to build upon, which was great. Five or six years ago. I mean, I'm looking at your picture. I don't think you're that old. How old were you <laughs> when you were on that show? Were you like 15 or 16 or something? I was, yeah. When I when I first auditioned for the show, I was 15, oh, and then wow. um, I was actually going to be on season 14, and um, at the same time, I got offered a record deal from Warner Brothers Records. Wow. So, decided to go that route, and then um, Christmas comes around, and the guy signing me, of course, there was a restructuring in the company. Um, I was literally being signed by the CEO. Um, and the deal fell through. I learned my first lesson in the music industry at 15 years old, um, and instantly I was, uh, <laughs> I was like back, you know, literally, as Katy Perry says, falling from cloud nine, right? And it was hysterical, though, because literally the next day after I lost my deal, American Idol called me again and were like, hey, do you want to audition for season 15 since we heard about what happened? <laughs> Um, and I said, you know what? Life's short. Opportunity knocks once, so you got to take it. Oh well, that was nice of them to do that. It was, yeah, it was cool. It was, um, yeah. It was funny how they found out so fast too. <laughs> News travels fast, I guess. Well, what happened with the deal? I mean, why did it just you signed and then it just immediately fell through? 
Was there some political thing at uh, at Warner's? Yeah, I was I was getting signed at the same time as a few other artists, and um, unfortunately, the CEO lost his position at the label, um, and they brought in another CEO with his own signing. So all of all of the CEOs, um, it was Rob Cavallo. He he's amazing. Um, he, so he was signing me, and unfortunately, he he lost his position there, and. Instantly, you know, they brought in their own people, the new CEO. <laughs> so, right. Okay. So corporate shakeup. You got sort yeah, of exactly. You got sort of caught up in the whirlwind of a corporate shakeup, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all right. You know what? Live and learn. Yeah. You know? it happens for a reason. I learned some great lessons. I um, got to have that amazing experience. You know, I remember um, I literally got walked around through Warner Brothers. And they introduced me to every single person at the label, which was insane. Um, so just that experience in and of itself was so valuable for me. Um, but I did, I grew up in the music industry, so it wasn't really a first for me, um, being at a label and being around all of those people in the industry. Um, but it was kind of the first time that I was standing on my own as an artist, um, because my dad is a recording artist. So Your dad yeah. is a recording um, artist. Okay. What kind of music does he do? He's a jazz artist. His name is Warren Hill. He's a saxophonist. Amazing. Ah, um, and okay. he, yeah, he's incredible. Now he actually runs music festivals. He's still an artist, but um, he, he has kind of reinvented and redefined what a musician is capable of um, by starting all of these incredible music festivals south of the border with the music getaways and um, just... Amazing. Both of my parents are amazing. Really um, inspirational for me, I think, because they're both in the music industry. Um, that's actually how they met. <laughs> uh, my dad was hired to play on my mom's record. And uh, so instantly, you know, I was born into the perfect family. <laughs> wow, it's not you and Miley Cyrus, yeah? <laughs> there you go, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so who do you like? Because, I mean, when I looked at your video, you know, initially I thought, okay, yeah, like Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, you're in that kind of group, genre, if you will. But but who do you listen to? Because if your father was a jazz musician, that's kind of a whole different world. Did you grow up listening to jazz? I did. I, I literally went to every concert and um, performed at most of them since I was two and a half. That was the first time I went on stage, little baby me. Um but yeah, I listen to a very wide variety of artists. Um, love the Rolling Stones, love Beatles, um, um, Billie Holiday, Nora Jones, um, and then of course the more recent stuff, like you said, Katy Perry, Bruno Mars, yeah. um, some Shawn Mendes. It, it really depends. I think I, I try to listen to quality music. That's that's the main thing that I strive to listen to. Oh, well, I'm so happy to hear that. And I saw something on your bio that I wanted to bring up. It says that yeah. you have a four-plus octave range in your voice to sing, yeah? Yes, I do. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, you know, the only other person that I've ever known, not personally known, but known of, who had that kind of a range was Ella Fitzgerald. And mm. she, you know, I'm sure you've heard of her, right? She was probably the best jazz singer there ever was. And, I mean, that's amazing. If If you're in that group you're in this sort of a royalty elite group of singers who can sing like that because Aww. well it's true i mean you know yes i'm giving you a, a nice compliment but it's also true because most singers uh depending on unless you're talking about opera but most like <laughs> pop singers and things they might have two octaves at the best and a lot of rock and roll singers very famous ones like kurt cobain and john lennon and people like that they had one octave it was a right. hell of an octave that they had, <laughs> and they, they did a lot with that one octave, but that was their limit. James right. Taylor is another one. He's a one-octave guy. Uh, beautiful mm -hmm. voice. I love his music. But if you've got that kind of range, that's unbelievable. And that's, that's something I think you were born with. Yeah, it just came with yeah. your, your DNA package. I don't, think, uh, I don't think people can take lessons to get four octaves. I really don't. I think that's something <laughs> that, that just comes with your... Uh, Comes with your birthright, so congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. So yeah, how did you? It's funny. Go ahead. Uh, you said Fitzgerald, and I was just thinking about I. I love vintage things, so you can probably tell from my music videos. I always do these like era music videos, but I have a, a very wide uh, vinyl record collection, 
and I have so many Ella records. I absolutely love her. Well, yeah. you just got to my heart because Ella is probably my favorite singer. My mother was a huge fan of Ella. So when I was a yeah. kid, and I mean, I'm probably old enough to be your grandfather. <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. Well, perhaps, maybe. I would have been a young one. But uh, so my mother was listening to Ella Fitzgerald. And so when I was a kid, I got to listen to Ella Fitzgerald. And to to this day, I mean, she's been gone for 20, 30 years at least. And she just blows me away. Every time I listen yeah. to her, it's like, oh, my God, that voice. It's just phenomenal. Oh. You know? Right, and I love I love summertime. That's like one of my all time favorite songs too. Oh, the real slow one she does that real yeah. slow. Oh God, that just sends shivers up my spine. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm also happy to hear another thing on your bio: no auto tune. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, that is true. That's true. I just think auto tune's cheating. It's like steroids right? with the with the sports people. You know, you don't do that. That is just absolutely yeah. cheating. So either you I'm, can I'm sing or you can't. Yeah. And, and having real artists and musicians on my tunes and, you know, having, having the integrity of the music, not just um, a little snare that's, you know, that's all you hear the whole song oh, and then one other yeah. instrument coming in. I like to have the dynamics. <laughs> well, and, and also, I mean, I do this rant on my show all the time about how computers are overtaking the music creation. And if there's too much computer in the, the sound that you're hearing, the music loses its soul. The soul comes yeah. from the people, from the musicians, from the artists. That's where the soul is. That's what hits you in the back of the, the neck when the hairs stand up. And, you know, any computer-generated sound doesn't do that for me. It just sort of leaves me yeah. cold. So a little bit is okay, but, you know, you've got to have the basis of a great singer and preferably real instruments rather than just, yeah. you know, a singer with a, with a pad on stage and all the, all the sound is already, you know, predetermined. I like live shows. I always do. Always have. I, I saw this one thing on the news, and it was this artist that people were following, and they didn't realize that the actual artist was uh, generated by some guy um, who created an AI. And it literally was a complete fake artist, oh, visually wow. animated, everything about it. The, it, the sound itself was um, just put through all of these different voice simulators and then auto-tuned to be in the key that they wanted it. And it literally was not even a person behind the artist. And I just thought that was kind of disheartening as an artist, you know what I mean? Um, to know that that's what you're having to, you know, quote unquote, compete with in the music industry. But it was also kind of comical because people didn't tell the difference until someone actually told them. Oh, that's just bad. That's like the next generation, Milli Vanilli. Pretty soon you're not going to be able to tell. I mean, AI is kind of a scary thing because you're just, yeah. have you seen some of those deep fake videos where they get you know, people saying stuff that they never said, and it's really oh, hard yeah. to tell what they, uh, <laughs> what's real and what's not. Well, the line's getting blurred, but I'm glad that you are real, and that's what's Thank important. Thank you. Well, actually, I am an AI. I'm sorry I didn't tell you that. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a very convincing one. Um, I want to yeah, ask you yeah. about a little bit about your show. I see here you, during the pandemic, I know that i interviewed and I've worked with a lot of performing artists and performing artists really got hurt with COVID for not being able to perform and a lot of people performance was their bread and butter I mean they were really hurting for money during the pandemic yeah. so you were doing a Facebook watch show called the Olivia Rock show are you still doing that or was that just kind of during the height of the pandemic you know I am still doing that and um, we're actually we're building this really cool um, studio right now. And so I was kind of waiting until that was fully built um, and then actually going back in person with people. Um, I thought that would be a wonderful way to kind of start the next season. But I do have this one episode in the can that I'm excited to release. Um, it's a comedy special. And I got 
both of my parents in it, and we played all of the roles in this entire comedy special. And basically the premise of it is it's all the people that got stuck uh, living with us during the lockdown, and we didn't realize that the lockdown actually ended, so they were all still here with us. Um, <laughs> it does sound funny, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's, it's like, you know, the pool guys and uh, the British agents and uh, the chefs and, you know, all of course, all of the people are actually us in our house. Um, so <laughs> that's what made it even funnier. It was like all of our alter egos. Um, the guru, we had, uh, oh man, it was it was quite a hoot. So you'll have to watch that when it comes out. <laughs> okay, so the Olivia Rock Show isn't just you performing. It's, it's all kinds of other things as well? It is, yeah. It's sort of a variety show. Um, I feature a lot of different artists and um, musicians as well as, I even had um, Dr. Terry Schroeder, who is an Olympian, four-time uh, silver medalist. And so he was on the show. I did a World Health Day special with him. Um, I've also done like a reggae special where I featured Kino from Big Mountain, um, and he performed Baby, I Love Your Way with myself and uh, ah, my father. Pe Peter Frampton. Yeah, it was yeah. an interesting thing. And um, I had Jim Peterick on the show, who wrote, you know, Eye of the Tiger and Hold On Loosely. Um, just to name a few, he's an amazing songwriter and artist himself. Um, so I had him on the show, and yeah, it was it was incredible just to really get to connect with um, these incredible artists and friends that I've met along the way, and sort of bring them into this uh, this variety show, um, which was really cool, you know, to get to interview them. And of course, the show itself started as a live stream um, in the very beginning. Of course, you know, with our very bad internet here at the house, uh, it was cutting out every five minutes. <laughs> it was horrible, uh, absolutely yeah. horrible. And by the time we got to um, the most recent episode, we were pre-filming it because of our internet. Um, and it was just wonderful to, to get to evolve in the way that we did. Oh, well, that's great. And uh, I'll, I'll check that out as well. Yeah, see if you like it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, it, it's a kind of like a talk show then you're doing, right? It is, yeah. yeah? It's the Olivia okay. Rock Show. So it's on Facebook. And um, it, it's crazy. I have 2 million uh, followers on Facebook. So I've been oh. getting a lot of uh, fans connecting with me on there, especially through the pandemic, I think. Um, is it on? I'm sorry, is it only on Facebook Watch or is it on YouTube as well? Or? This particular one is only on Facebook Watch. I think I'm going to expand... Um, for the next season, but for right now, it's only on Facebook. Facebook Watch. Okay. All right, I'll check it out. Well, Olivia, yeah. we do have to wrap this up. Unfortunately, we are out of time. It's really been lovely talking to you. And mm, you too. Best of luck with everything that you're doing. Uh, do you have a website that you want to give out? Sure, yeah. You can go to oliviarocks.com, and that's Olivia R-O-X. Olivia R-O-X. <laughs> okay. Olivia R-O-X <laughs> dot com, and you can check out. And everything is there, links to your music and... All of that is there? It's all on there. We have a new holiday store that just launched, um, which is pretty exciting. You know, got pajamas and aprons and hats and T-shirts and phone cases, all those wonderful things that you would expect. Um, and, yeah, you can watch all my videos on there. I have um, all my music videos, um, links to, of course, the Facebook Watch show, the Olivia Rock show. And um, if you want to... Follow me on other social media, too. It's just at Olivia Rocks, R-O-X. All right, great. Thanks so much for coming on the show, and best of luck. Thank you so much, Douglas. It was wonderful to speak with you.